and welcome to the Idea Space podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. This week, I'm interviewing my best friend and former business partner, Leslie Smith. Leslie had to overcome a lot of doubt when she was trying to figure out what to do after our first business together closed. She was pretty resistant to making these choices and these decisions were very hard for her and living in the doubt was really crippling for her and she struggled so much. So she very generously shares her story today. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you on the other side. Hi, welcome to today's interview. I am Jen Liddy, and if you've been following along, you know that I have been interviewing creative men and women who have made a leap of some sort from one area where they didn't feel comfortable to another area where they didn't feel comfortable. And today, I'm really excited to introduce you to my best friend, Leslie Smith. Leslie is also my former partner in my first business, and She and I could probably spend like three hours talking about what it's like for best friends to go into business together, but that's actually not what we're talking about today. Um, Leslie has agreed very generously to come on and talk about resistance because this month I'm talking all about resistance and how it keeps us from moving forward. Now, usually the people that I work with are resistant to becoming entrepreneurs. And Leslie's story is a real twist on that whole thing. So we're going to talk about today what she was resistant to, how that felt in her body, what it, what came up for her, and how she got through the resistance to get to where she is now. So I want to welcome you. Thank you, my best friend. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Happy to be here. I'm excited to have you. Can you tell everybody a little, can you give the gist of how we came to work together as entrepreneurs and what that was like for you? Ooh, the gist. Okay. So I think we both had come to a point in our lives where we were seeking something. Um, and we had found kind of this, I don't know if it would be a motivation or a, this excitement around fitness that we had found together. And it just seemed for me at least that it was time to go on an adventure. Mm -hmm. You know, I had been home um, (laughs) after being an occupational therapist for many years. I'd been home with my daughter for, um, it had been, I think two years at that point. And I knew I wanted something different, something exciting, something challenging. And I think we both, I should just speak for myself, but I think I kind of fell into entrepreneurship, not really expecting to own a business. So it just kind of organically happened and then at a very quick pace. And then all of a sudden I was a business owner. Boom. You were an entrepreneur. Boom. And that's what it felt like. Boom. Oh yeah. Like a smacker. I mean, I think I'm still recovering. It was. (laughs) Would you say you were a reluctant entrepreneur? I wouldn't say I was a reluctant entrepreneur because I didn't know what an entrepreneur was. So I think I was reluctant to maybe heed the wisdom of other entrepreneurs because I was sure I was going to do it the way it needed to be done. Um, I was excited. I was very excited and, and really kind of jazzed up about the challenge of it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that I was very realistic or very open to feedback. I think we were uninformed entrepreneurs. Oh, yeah. And I mean, when you fall into something, that's what's going to happen, right? Like you you play catch up the whole time because it's not like you've planned this nice little progression into owning a business. We just woke up one day and said, we're going to do this. 
Yeah. Not only were we uninformed, we were also, like you said, so resistant to learning from anybody else because we th- thought everybody else was doing it wrong and we were going to do it right. right. What, how would you characterize that quality that we had? How did it affect you personally? Ooh. Well, I think from previous careers and experiences and coaching that I had gone through, um, I had kind of picked out the the areas that felt important to me. Like I wanted to run a business in a more organic way. I wanted to do it in a more inclusive way. I wanted it to, you know, we ran into so much resistance with the male female dynamic and I wanted to make sure that changed. And so there were all of these small areas that I was sure we could do it better in, but I think the biggest issue I had was not doing the homework around that. Like assuming that we were the first people to ever (laughs) think that we could make these changes. We Um, were the first entrepreneurs who wanted to do it differently, Leslie. Duh. I know. (laughs) So I think it was, I think it was some ego. I think it was some ignorance. I think it was real resistance to for me personally, real resistance to the man and like what, yes, what they say you should be doing in entrepreneurship. So instead of taking the the bits and pieces that made a lot of sense, I just shut the door on that Mm -hmm. and I was not about to hear it and I was going to figure it out myself. Which sucked. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's reinventing the wheel when the wheel is right over there. Just go pick it up, but no. And make it your own. Right. So it was, it was this amazing martyrdom, which I'm real good at. So good at that. Hold on tight to that. And, and just this, this ego that said, you know, screw y'all. We can figure this out. We know what we're doing and we're going to do it the way it needs to be done. So it was hard. <clears throat> oh girl, how hard. Oh my God. So hard. So, hard. <laughs> so let's fast forward a little bit. Okay. So we're in business together for a total of about three and a half or four years. Looking back on it, it's interesting that it was really only about three and a half years because it felt like so much longer. And yet not. It's, I mean, where we are now, you know, every now and then I'm like, oh my God, that happened? Right. <laughs> it was like a blip on the screen. Yeah. And it, but when we were in it, it felt uh, really hard. Yeah, it did. And you, you made it what you made it yours. You did it your way. You, and we, we didn't know what we were doing. There were so many conflicts and you still made it your own. So by the end you Mm -hmm. were an entrepreneur, you really identified as an entrepreneur. Oh yes. So tell me what it meant to you to identify as an entrepreneur. Uh, well, you know, I think that the title of entrepreneurship really became a badge Mm. for me. Um, because what we went through was so hard, I needed something to show for it or they were my, it was my, you know, war wounds, whatever it is. Um, I felt like owning the title of entrepreneur meant immediately when you met another one, there was a connection because you have this instant support, this instant community that you're a part of. Like we've all been, we're all in the same war together. Right. Okay. Like, girl, I know what you've been through. Like that kind of right. just instant connection with, with anybody. Um, and that became my community. And I'm very much a community person. I need my people. I need my tribe. And our business created that tribe for me for those three and a half, four years. And then all of a sudden it was gone. And so I very much wanted to find that community again. And it just seemed to me that an entrepreneur is what I now am. Like you had earned your Period. badge. I earned my badge and, and now I need to find my people and continue in some other form because I worked so hard to get there and it was such a challenge. And I've learned, and that was the, one of the biggest things is I learned so much during those years that to not be an entrepreneur almost felt like I was flushing that down the toilet, you know, like I'm walking away from this, you know, the things I could do with what I learned. Like a piece of your identity had been taken away. 
if, if I hadn't followed the entrepreneur path, then yes, a piece of my identity is gone. My support network is gone. And also the struggle is gone. Oh, that's a good you one. Know? Can you talk a little bit more about that? I, um, well, you know me. I like a good, I like a good struggle. I like a little drama in my life. I prefer for it to be productive drama, but it doesn't always end up that way. Uh, I just like a challenge. And so taking on entrepreneurship when I did, you know, I really did that for me. I really did that because I wanted to kind of build the confidence in myself that I could tackle something like that, try something new. Um, and I got very used to how hard it was. I got very used to, again, probably the martyr piece. You know, it felt good to struggle and say, but I'm working so hard. And I'm, you know, this, sure, this stuff is falling apart, but I'm working so hard. So I really, um, I think just got used to that. It started to fit after a while. And so after leaving, it, it just seems like, well, now I, it, it needs to be hard. Like, what am I going to do? That's, that's going to be hard. It shouldn't be easy. Life shouldn't be easy. I can't take the easy oh. route. Right. Can you give a little context for people who don't know the story? Just a like high level overview of how and why the community ended and you being an entrepreneur ended, like how the company, what, what happened at the end? Um, can I give an overview? I mean, I guess for me, the reason that I left, is that what you mean? Well, the, the bottom line is like the company, you, you wanted to leave as an owner. I had already left as an owner. I went silent. Right. right. You worked probably five or six months still on in the business, mm -hmm. knowing that you wanted to get out because it wasn't feeding you anymore and we weren't getting paid. Right. right. The business right. wasn't making enough money to pay all three of us. Right. And so in the summer of 2017, Mm -hmm. we gave the full ownership back to the original founder. Correct. And at that point, the business was still running. She was running it. Mm -hmm. And you were no longer at that point running a business. You were no longer an active entrepreneur, but you were an entrepreneur in your brain. Right. Yes. So that's accurate. That is accurate. Okay. So at that point, what was your plan? You know, at that point, I decided I was giving myself a summer. I was giving myself a summer to do all the things, to have all the adventures, to live as big as I could, to be with my family 24-7. And, you know, somewhere in my brain, I had decided that that would fill me up and then I could get back to work. I could dive back in. And it absolutely did fill me up. And what I realized is while I was in it, I was just so happy. You know, I kept thinking, well, I can push that a little longer. I can push that a little longer. And I couldn't figure out why. Talk about resistance. It felt very wrong for me to enjoy that so much. It felt like, it felt lazy of me. It felt um, like I really wasn't living my full potential and doing all the things that I should be doing because I was just happy. <laughs> we were all happy. Did you, but I don't remember you during that time really acknowledging how happy you were. I remember there just being this constant struggle of, I'm pushing this off. I'm thinking about what I want to do next. Maybe I'll be a coach. I'll build my business. But absolutely a lot of struggle. I don't remember you saying, I'm just so happy. Oh no, because I wouldn't, it felt wrong to admit I was happy. Okay. Because then what am I doing? You know, it, it was looking back, I can say that the resistance was, I was very happy, but I wouldn't allow myself to be because I just kept thinking, well, what are you going to do? Like th this can't last forever. This is not, this is not <laughs> what you're supposed to be doing. This is not living your life. This is not, you know, all of these stories in my head. So while I was happy, I didn't want to say that out loud because it was embarrassing mm. because I'm just, I'm just happy being home. Your tribes people were all women who had their own businesses at this point because that's the community you had cultivated. Right. And those are the people I love. Yeah. 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 And so I was still involved in that community, doing different workshops, but involved in different groups. And I was holding on so desperately to that, that I started to realize 
you know, I'm saying I want to be an entrepreneur. I know I want to be an entrepreneur. I have to be an entrepreneur, but I don't know what freaking business I want to run. Mm -hmm. Like I had no, and so I would try this and I would try this and I would dip a toe in here and dip a toe in here. And it just occurred to me that I'm forcing something simply to retain an identity, Mm -hmm. simply to stay in that, in that circle and in that place with those people that I love. You didn't want to lose your identity. Yeah. I couldn't see another way around that. And I struggled with, if I left that identity, what would be my next identity? That was a really hard. Who would I become? Who would I be? Right. And then also you have this best friend who loves to pain in the ass. She is a giant pain in the ass. Your best friend is the worst, but who loves to work. So this is an interesting struggle that you and I have as best friends because I love to show up and I love to work and we work together. I was always like, I was definitely the pusher. Like I was Mm -hmm. pushing you to do more and work harder, blah, blah, blah. And so that was a connection that we had for so long. So when you kind of opt out of being an entrepreneur, it's like this other thing that we don't have in common anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was something that we didn't have in common before we worked together. Right. And then we worked together and it became a, a, another level of our friendship, another level of a way for us to hold each other accountable in different ways and, and just for us to be with each other. And then we remove that and I see you taking off and getting so excited and being the entrepreneur that you wanted to be all along mm-hmm. and the ease, which I know there were struggles. But, but the ease also of you kind of just growing into the entrepreneur that you wanted to be and me thinking, well, she makes it look really easy and she's working so hard and what the hell am I doing? And I'm sure you've heard this before from other entrepreneurs, like you are such a hard worker and you find such joy in it that it seems like it's not hard, but it's just the hard that you are drawn to, yep. you know, and, and I can attest to everyone out there, you work your ass off. Oh, I do. You work your ass off. Like you are content <clears throat> at 80 hours a week and the rest of us try to reel you back in because we want you to play also. So it's not like you just fall into it. You know, I think a lot of entrepreneurs think, well, if I put in my 10 hours a week, why yeah. aren't things happening? Right. I know what it takes. And I, I know I don't, want to, I don't want to do that. Well, this is the point that I love in the story because you get to this point where you're like, she's working so hard, but she makes mm-hmm. it look easy. And, oh my God, I'm losing my identity. And, my, and I'm putting air quotes around this. I'm just going to be a mom. You know, there's mm-hmm. that whole thing that you had to grapple with. Right. So you're, you've got all of these thoughts going on in your head. You, a lot of shoulding on yourself. I should, I should, mm-hmm. I should, because I've already put in the work and I know what it takes and I can do it differently now. And I've learned so right. much, like a lot of shoulding. So I'm curious, what did that resistance to mm-hmm. letting go of entrepreneurship feel like in your body? Ugh. It felt like, like even talking about it and hearing you talk about it, all the sensations are coming back and it's not fun. <laughs> It just, it feels like for me, this iron cylinder just in my chest, just pulling me down and making me feel like I am stuck. I can't move. I can't breathe. I I just can't be who I want to be. Wow. So you feel really out of integrity with yourself when you go back to thinking about being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Okay. So this is the physical resistance that you have the physical discomfort. You walked around with that and you tried to like kind of push through. But I imagine when you feel like there's a lead cylinder in your body that you move slowly and everything feels really effortful. Mm-hmm. Okay. And nothing is really quite enjoyable. Yes. Because you're just carrying it with you the whole time. Okay. So what the, the reason I really wanted to talk to you about this is a lot of my clients feel uncomfortable with the idea of doing the opposite of you, of becoming mm-hmm. an entrepreneur, right? Mm-hmm. And, and designing that life, that feels uncomfortable to them. I want to know what also was going on in your head. So this is your physical sensation, but it seems like it's more than just discomfort. It seems like it's more than just you're wearing a suit that doesn't fit. Like you really have something leaden going on in your body. What mm-hmm. was going on in your mind? 
In my mind, it was a lot of, you know, social self versus, you know, your, your true self. So it was a lot of shame. It was a lot of, you know, if I say this out loud, who am I at this point? It was a lot of struggle with the, the just, I'm just going to be, you know, just was a big word that made me start to really have to look at my own thoughts and challenge how I judge because clearly there's some shit there. Right. So there was, there was a lot of work that I was doing a little at a time because I, I had it at least kept up with my, you know, my daily meditations and my, uh, my own personal work, which I think was very helpful, you Mm -hmm. know, for me to finally getting to that point where I said it out loud. Um, But yeah, it was just, it was very noisy. It was very noisy. There were a lot of excuses. There were a lot of, um, Mm -hmm. the shooting was serious, gross, serious shooting. What was the moment where you were like, okay, I know that this is uncomfortable, but it's not like a good uncomfortable. It's not like a just like, ah, I just need, like you knew you needed to pivot or really take a hard right. Mm-hmm. What was that moment for you? The moment, you know, I had, I had some small moments along the line, you know, just in conversations with people that kind of started to, to build up in my head. But the moment that I knew was the moment I said it out loud, which was in a workshop with you. Mm. And the question was that you posed, you know, we were talking about hows, how to do things in your business. And, and when you don't know how, it's also often very stifling and you just kind of freeze. And so your question that you posed to everyone was, if you knew how to do blank in your business, you would blank. And for me, the how that I could never figure out as an entrepreneur had always been, I don't know how to balance home, you know, my family life and being an entrepreneur. And that was my biggest struggle when we worked together because I am essentially a stay at home mom and working and was working full time because my husband travels about 50% or more of the time and two kids, two dogs, you know, all the craziness. So when I was sitting there thinking about it, you know, a bunch of things came up. If I knew how to balance home and work, I would, and you know, I could come up with a few things, but then all of a sudden I wrote down, I would still not want to be an entrepreneur. And I wrote that down and I looked at it and I was like, well, shit, we're just going to breeze past that. <laughs> and then I just kept <laughs> That's writing That's not an important it. thing. That's not important. No, 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 no. And then we started going around the room sharing, you know, what came up for you. And I can remember someone was talking to the right of me and she was, she was being very honest and saying, you know, the things that she was struggling with. And I just had this moment of like, if this really is my tribe, they will hear what I have to say and they will witness this moment with respect and support. And I'm going to ball my eyes out. And I just read through the list really quickly. And I was like, there's only one that I don't want to read out loud. And so that's the one I have to read out loud. I, it was just a really important moment for me. And so I'm getting chills going back to that moment where you ugh. honored your truth. You just stopped terrifying. resisting. Yeah. What in that moment, because I think a lot of people have resistance to something. Like they know they need help with something, but they don't have the courage to invest in themselves. Or they know mm-hmm. they want to bring their idea to life and they don't know how. But so they're, they're, there's like all of these stories and they're walking around with their chains on them and their stories in their head. Mm-hmm. And maybe they don't have the experience that you do in being really vulnerable with yourself and and honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. What was it in that moment that allowed you to say this incredibly hard thing, which is, I don't want to be an entrepreneur anymore. In a room of entrepreneurs where your best (laughs) friend is teaching and loves being an entrepreneur, you... It was so scary. (laughs) What were you afraid of? What would be the worst thing that could have happened that day? Well, for me, you know, along with my awesome martyr tendencies. I'm also a people pleaser. Oh yeah. 
And I worry very much about what people think. And it is something that, you know, I've been working on for a gazillion years and I'll keep working on for a gazillion more. And so in that moment for me, it was, what are they going to think of me? Mm-hmm. What, what is this group of amazing entrepreneurs who they are in the struggle and they are working hard and they are living their dream? What are they going to think of me when I admit this is not my dream? Um, what, what, what is the world going to think of me when they say, what do you do? And I don't say, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. What am I going to think of myself when I say, I'm a stay-at-home mom? And in turn, what do I think of other people that say that? So it was that it was just all of that, like, uh, like I have to admit to myself this ugliness I've been carrying around, this judgment I've been carrying around of people who are just stay-at-home moms. Right. She put air quotes around that, by the way. <laughs> just like it's not the biggest job on earth. It's the biggest job on earth. And and you know, I was just talking to a friend yesterday about, you know, she works part time and she's a stay at home mom and you know saying to her that's the hardest thing in the world because you have to you do it all and you don't do any of it well right. and so um to also I think a piece of it was the the privilege aspect of here I am able to stay home and that felt yucky to me like I should be struggling I should worry about money I should I should you know like it's just so funny how I, I just did not want to identify as someone who is able to stay at home. Or somebody who's in ease. Right. The, you, and the most ironic part of this is you didn't want to, you know, you didn't want to admit that you were somebody who could feel ease around something. So you just kept struggling and struggling and struggling mm-hmm. until you were in incredible dis-ease and that moment where you said it and nobody died and nobody gasped and nobody said, are you crazy? Like, right. They, everybody just looked at you like, like, I think we gave like little golf claps as a matter yeah. of fact. I think we were really proud of you for owning. We got a lot of hugs. Your truth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what did that feel like the moment you surrendered and came out of resistance? Oh my God. It just felt like this huge release. Mm -hmm. It was just like I could breathe and there didn't have to be answers, you know, because I I also knew that I wanted to do things in the world, but I didn't know what they were, but I didn't feel this pressure to know an answer. Mm -hmm. So I think there's just something to be said for being able to completely surrender to your truth and just allow things to happen because it, it was very quickly after that, that one thing after another, you know, these things just presented themselves to me that just felt easy. They just felt like the right answer. You know, I was approached about volunteering at something that I had, didn't even know I was looking for, but it was like the exact right opportunity that just, it, it just fit. It just felt right. So you then moved into ease because you surrendered from the resistance. You found ease. Now, I want to point out that I think the things that you've chosen are frankly not easy. You've chosen Mm -hmm. to be a full-time mom and you don't have a job that pays you money. Mm -hmm. I would find that incredibly, that would put me in Mm. dis-ease. So I want to make the point that ease is not the same for everyone. You have chosen a lifestyle that brings you great satisfaction, fulfillment, and and joy. And you have finally found your ease by leaning into the discomfort and and stopping resisting, right? right? And if I were to make the same exact choice as you, I would actually be in great resistance. I would be in great dis ease. Right. So the reason I really wanted to talk to you, Tave, is because you, you just present this beautiful other perspective on, like, well, you, you, you present a great perspective on what resistance really looks like and feels like and sounds like in our heads, but you also present, mm-hmm. like, not everybody is, is born to be an entrepreneur. And I don't know that you and I were born to be entrepreneurs, but we sure did learn how. But even right. once we learned how, I don't know that we 
felt like we wanted, you didn't want to continue and I did, right? So Mm -hmm. I guess the point I really wanted to make with having you on is until you honor the dis-ease that's going on inside of you and you honor the resistance and just like examine it because what could have happened is you might have said, I'm not sure I want to be an entrepreneur and I don't know what's next. And then, and then another entrepreneurial offer could have come your way and you might have taken it, but you right. at least would have known your own truth. Right. I think right. that's what I really want people to get to with the resistance because mm-hmm. that, the resistance for my clients sometimes comes up in you know, I really want to start a business. I know exactly what it would be, but Mm -hmm. my husband doesn't really believe in me and he doesn't want to pay for me to, I don't know, whatever it is, get a website, get training, hire a coach, whatever. Like Mm -hmm. he doesn't want to pay for me. A lot of my clients feel that way. That's a, that's a resistance. And until you say it out loud, you don't even know what it is. Right. Right. For me, my resistance always comes, and this is why you and I are such interesting friends, because my resistance always comes with play and Mm -hmm. joy and happiness because I would always rather grind and work and chip away. Mm -hmm. And you're here to teach me there is, there is ease and you should you should take some of it and you should enjoy life a little bit more. Right. So um, that's where my resistance comes because I will always resist having fun and I will always choose work. So Mm -hmm. I I think we, I think we also have a hard time honoring that that's a gift in each of us. Like, Mm -hmm. Like for me, playing and having fun and going on adventures is just so easy and it's so a part of who I am that I don't realize that sometimes that's exactly what somebody else needs in their life. Like sometimes they just need a little sprinkling of Leslie in their life. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that that what brings you ease also does give you value. Yeah. I think that's... um, that's kind of a lie that we tell ourselves a lot. Like if it's easy, then it might, must not be good. It must not be good. Yeah. 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 And the value that I bring is for somebody who can never get out of their own way and is constantly in the ethers. I ground them and and pull them down and make them. Who are you talking about? I I don't know who I'm talking about, (laughs) but uh, yeah. So I want to say like, find the ease because that's probably where your special sauce is. Yeah. It feels good too. Yeah. It's okay to be in ease. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. So what um, advice would you give to a woman who is creative and knows that there's an itch inside of her and is feeling a lot of resistance to whatever her next step is? Ooh. Uh, well, for me, it's always about becoming quiet and trying to really listen to that voice. So for me, you know, meditation helps a great deal. Um, actually right before I got on with you, I did a quick meditation and I like to kind of let the universe decide what it's going to be. So I hit shuffle on my, my playlist and see what comes up for me. And that's crazy. What's wrong with you? That's not the right way to do it. (laughs) Well, the beautiful thing was today, the one that came up for me was a throat chakra meditation, which is speaking your truth. And I was like, of course, of course it did. (laughs) Um, so I think, uh, getting quiet is really, really helpful. And I think writing, seeing what comes out of you, because I think a lot of things hide when we're speaking to other people. I think that we put up a lot more walls than we think we do. I think we are very aware of judgments and, and what somebody else might be thinking, or maybe just the people pleasers in the room. Mm-hmm. And so writing saying I'm never showing this to anybody. I'm just going to write down the things that I'm worried about or the things that I'm resistant to can really shed a lot of light on, on something that you just may have totally blocked out because you just don't want to hear it. So basically you have to be honest with yourself when you're in resistance at the time is to check in with yourself. Where are you feeling it in your body? What stories are you telling yourself? And then it's time to be honest with yourself. It is. And that's all. I think that's a lot harder than it seems. And that's where it also is super handy to have a best friend who will call you on your shit. <laughs> say, why the hell aren't you talking and to me? is a coach. On? <laughs> You're not, yeah. <laughs> right. A coach or a best friend who is a coach. Because <laughs> they don't uh, let you hide from your shit. That's true. Like, lucky you. Lucky, lucky, lucky you. And, and lucky Jack too, my poor 11 year old who... Oh, yeah. Has a coach for a mom. Poor boy. (laughs) (laughs) 
Leslie, thank you so much for sharing all this stuff because it's, it's vulnerable stuff. And I think hearing it from somebody who chose the other kind of lifestyle is valuable. So thank you for that. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me. It was lovely. It was fun. Hanging out with my bestie. I know. Fun. <laughs> bye. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. What I love about this interview with Leslie is that she covers a lot of uncomfortable stuff and she was in great resistance about everything, which caused a lot of doubt for her, but it eventually revealed her truth. And she had somebody that she could work through it with who didn't judge her because when we judge ourselves, it makes it so much worse. So where are you in dis ease in your life? Where are you in resistance to something that you just need to overcome and work through? And who is helping you through it? Because most times we're not our own best friend when it comes to this. If you need support, please reach out because it's exactly how I got through my doubt. It's exactly how she got through her doubt was having support. So next week, we're continuing to talk about doubt And I'm teaching you how to use your thoughts to help you overcome doubt. And I wonder if you're even aware of what your thoughts are around doubt. So this is all work you can do in the meantime. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. See you then. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. Or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.